Blue Ocean Strategies, a book written by W. Sean Kim and Rene Mobor. Uh, Blue Ocean Strategies is about finding a marketplace with a low level of competitions or no competition. The basic idea is to make competition irrelevant. Uh, according to the authors, the market can be divided in two different marketplaces. Red Oceans, where it's blood, competition, price wars. These are the known industries and the known marketplaces. On the other hand, there are new, uncontested marketplaces, dominated by what we could say new industries. For them, competition is less relevant. Uh, in the Red Oceans, the rules of the, na of the game is known, competitors are known, uh, they're all competing on trying to make what they're doing, but doing it better and better, or possibly cheaper and cheaper. In the Blue Oceans, the profitability is much, much higher, the risk is fairly reasonable, and they're utilizing an untapped market demand. The market space is not mapped yet, uh, and the market space is undefined, but that is also what creates the opportunity. In the new marketplace, the cre it's a creation of demand, it's value innovation, it's focus, it's differentiation. It is about making something different, not competing head-to-head -to, -head to competitors. Blue oceans can be created from red oceans. It's about changing the industry boundaries. A good example of that could be the Canadian company Cirque du Soleil that is in the circus business. But instead of having monkeys and elephants and animals that are expensive to feed and take care of, they're combining elements from circus and theater and it's tapping a completely new market. Another example is the American winemaker Yellow Tag that instead of making wine complicated, making wine simple. I'll say more about that later. Why should a company pursue blue oceans? Well, because in today's world, with rapid change of technology, many older industries are becoming obsolete or profitability is severely hampered. Therefore, pursuing the blue oceans is a way to create profitability and success also in the future. Uh, one of the keys to success in the blue oceans is value innovation. So instead of focusing on beating the competition, you focus on making it irrelevant by creating a leap in value for buyers and creating uncontested market space. This only occurs when organizations have aligned innovation with utility, price and cost. To make value innovation work, the market must be ready to accept the new products or services, meaning that timing is key, being too early to market doesn't work, being too late to market, somebody else have taken the market space. The focus is both of innovation, differentiation and low cost to provide value to both customers and the organization. So it's not necessarily about having low price but low cost, thereby creating nice fat profit margins. Uh, one of the uh, tools used is something called strategic canvas where you're basically comparing competitors offers or the standard industry offer in different aspects and there's a way to capture the current state of play in the known marketplace. It allows the company to understand <coughs> where the competition the currently where the competition currently is investing, the factors the industry is currently competes on when it comes to personal services and delivery and what customers receive from the existing competitive offerings on the market. The strategic canvas is basically a diagram with an X and a Y axis and the horizontal axis captures a range of factors which, on the, which the industry competes in and invests in. The vertical axis captures offering level that buyers receive across the, all the competing firms in the industry. And by that you create a value curve where you see what is offered and on what level it's offered. 
that creates a map of the industry's factors of competition. An example, I told you I will say more about Yellowtail, the winemaker. The Yellowtail felt that uh, many Americans did not understand wine. They find wine complicated, so they prefer to drink beer or very cheap wine. Because premium wines have a high price, um, they need to be stored, the label is difficult to read, and budget wines, well, budget wines are budget wines and simply not very pleasant. So therefore, Yellowtail's goal was to make it simple. And here I would like to show you a picture, actually, if I may. Can we focus on this canvas here? So here is an example of this strategic canvas, where we have price, aging, range, and other factors. And we have the premium wines value curve, or the budget wines value curve, and the blue line here is Yellowtail's value curve that differs greatly from premium wines as well as for budget wines. They were highly criticized for this strategy by wine journalists and so on, but the general public, they liked good wine, simple to understand, decent prices. Now, the way it's done is to undertake four actions. Eliminate. What factors should be eliminated that the industry has taken for granted? Reduce. What factors should be reduced that the industry has been taking for granted? Raise. What factors should be raised well beyond industry standards? And lastly, create. What factors should be created that the industry have never offered? The example of yellow tile. They eliminated analogical termination distinctions. They eliminated aging qualities and they eliminated above-the-line marketing to spend less on marketing. They reduced wine complexity, they reduced the wine range, they reduced vineyard prestige, they raised price versus budget wines. So they were more expensive than the cheap ones, wines, but much cheaper than the prestigious ones. And they worked closely together with the retail stores regarding how to display the wine and how it should be marketed in the stores. What they created was easy drinking, ease of selection, fun and adventure. Cirque du Soleil found out that other circuses that focused on benchmarking to be better than the other circus, they used high profile stars, which increased cost. However, the general public had a very hard time even noticing this since they didn't know the stars. They used traditional venues and traditional audience, well, families with kids. Cirque du Soleil they focused on creating a hybrid between the theater and the circus. And retention they, of the glamorous part of the circus, such as using a tent, and create, because it creates more breathtaking aspects of acrobats and so on. They incorporated more sophistication and comfort, elegance, like in a theater, but still inside a tent. So they were reaching out to completely different demographics of customers. Customers that may consider going to the theater or to the opera instead of going on Sunday afternoon to the circus with the children. It looked across market boundaries and created new ones with great success. A good strategy for a company wanting to pursue blue ocean strategies is to be focused and not diffused across potential aspects of the market. Focus on the most important aspects of the market that you are able to deliver. The shape of the value curve diverge from potential competitors. Then you know you're in the blue oceans. If your value curve differs greatly from competitors, then you have less direct competitors or no direct competitors. And also, it's important that a good strategy have a compelling tagline, so it's easy to understand the strategy just from a few words. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy this video regarding blue ocean strategies. My name is Johan Wimbla and I'm teaching at City University's European programs.